Good morning, folks. We've got an excellent run of science stories for you here today. Also have top Earth news and some space weather. So let's begin with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the southern coronal hole has now turned in to reach center disk. Earth's magnetic connection to the region is in focus for seismicity, while its intensified solar wind won't be arriving until the end of the weekend or early next week. Meanwhile, a minor solar wind intensification did occur overnight. Middle purple panel, we see the plasma speed rising at the right. As I said, it was a minor rise only, so the rise on the KP index is minor as well. Still in the green, but we'll have eyes on it. Let's go to Spain. Some of the flood footage coming in looks devastating. They've also endured tornado activity, and the rough shift in weather also brought a cold snap to the area. Luckily, forecasters are seeing a better week upcoming, temperatures set to jump back up across the pond. Meanwhile, here in Colorado, we just had our first snow of the season. It is worth noting, they have been getting it a bit north of here in the Rockies already this summer. Quick note on the low approaching Florida. GFS model has it running on shore and being a rain event only, while the Euro model keeps it offshore and strengthens into a hurricane. Happily, in that model, there is no landfall, but of course, forecasts change, so eyes on that as well. New paper out on the first recorded aurora in known human history. Pushes it back by nearly a century, we have the Assyrian record showing three major auroral candidates, and all around an isotope peak in time, which had been previously suggested to be high solar activity way back when. Up next, it appears the second known interstellar object has entered the system and is a few months from close approach. While this object is not going to hit any planet or come even close, its viewing is going to increase dramatically as we approach December, and it will last a few weeks afterwards as well. This should be the best window into outer system and outside the solar system chemistry that we have ever had. Up next, we're at Hubble's latest capture of Saturn. Not only is it gorgeous with the sun's reflecting light on this hemisphere, but some of the moons are visible as well. While we often see Hubble's optical or infrared cameras, this is a largely ultraviolet return. Before we get to the complex science, let's peek in on another reason to dislike neonicotinoid pesticides. We've seen dozens of studies of their effect on bees and other pollinators. This morning, the list expands to include birds as well. Article link below. And we're going out into deep space. We begin remembering that while plasma and electric theory conflicts with mainstream black hole science, something massive exists out there, and they may collide from time to time. Well, now scientists are saying that by dissecting their merger signals, which they call gravitational waves, they've identified tonal patterns within them sounding the ring of the event. While their explanation for its causation is a bit of a fun guess, the signals are real, and so are the tonal patterns. But something that's not real, dark matter. Nice piece here on how a couple ultra-diffuse galaxies are in such tension that we should question the large-scale dark matter paradigm under which science currently operates. We've been known to agree from time to time. Up next, our top stories, and another thing plasma and electric theory seeks to adjust is gravitational lensing. Alas, it's not as though the apparent lens effect isn't there, it's just we might need a different explanation which we don't care about this morning because it's being used to discover more about the interconnectedness of the cosmos, the radio bridges, plasma connections between the massive cosmic neighborhoods, a key component of the plasma theory. And we've recently seen NASA and Caltech explain that at the galaxies themselves, the filaments feeding them do so in helical, spiral, vortex flows of current. And speaking of which, galaxies are fed, but they also spew out, and exhaust and transform material into energy. Are galaxies gaining or losing mass? What about our own Milky Way? It is now confirmed, convincingly, the Milky Way is in a growth phase, either continued from initiation or cycled back to it, we don't know. But there is a surplus of material coming into the Milky Way from the cosmic web and surrounding medium. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members, you've got yet another Deeper Look episode in the premium section. We are on a bit of a tear here in September there, actually. We've also got tons of great videos and catching up for free on the homepage as well. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close here. 
We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.